Hello everybody, how's it going? It's your boy, Mushroom King. <laughs> oh no, I'm wearing shoes, I forgot about that. Whoops. It's supposed to be bad, but whatever. We're out here by the Menai Strait today. Just did a lovely little food shop, got tons of veggies. Uh, Poppy and my friend Charlie are encouraging me to eat way, way better. So I was eating, eating some pasta last night and I felt so terrible while I was eating it. Like every bite was just a misery. And I'm like, why, why am I doing this to myself? I know how to cook healthy. Why don't I do it? And my excuse before was just time. It's just faster to cook this really easy stuff. But then, <laughs> if you don't make time for your health, then you're gonna have to make time for your sickness. So there is no shortcut to this whole eating thing. You have to do it properly. And like, I'm coming up to age 30, like level three. I'm getting to, a, to an age where I can't just eat whatever I want and it just burns off. Like I'm putting on weight that I've never put on before. And I have to just, I have to prepare now for the rest of my life. Like, do I want to feel good? Do I want to feel good? That's the bottom line when it comes to food. Do I want to feel good? Um, that's like, Physically, but also consciously. Am, am I doing any harm to anything else? Like, am I am I eating palm oil, which is destroying rainforest? Am I eating honey, which is having bees gas? Like, I'm I'm obviously vegan, so I'm I'm not eating animal products. But I just think about about all these micro things, micro ingredients, avoid chemicals and stuff like that, because I I want to live here for a long time. I, I don't think however many years they promise us is, is enough. I want more than that. Anyway. So last night, my realization was nutrition is the most important thing for me right now. And I've been neglecting it. And it's the reason I don't have so much energy. It's the reason I go to bed so late. It's, it's like the reason for most of everything. When I'm exercising, I can't go as long as I used to. And like, it's because of nutrition. I'm not focusing on the important things that my body needs. So yeah, I reached out to my two friends, Poppy and Charlie. They're the people that I know understand nutrition the most so with their help I think I can uh, I can turn this thing around so today I did a conscious shop I've been unconsciously shopping for food grocery shopping for, for years now I'm just not not really aware of what I'm doing I'm just in autopilot buying the same old stuff so now I've actually made the conscious effort to buy all the fruit and veggies and that was it. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna start by probably making a really nice curry tonight. I got some broccoli, some butternut squash, some parsnips, got some tomatoes, some melon, uh, a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'll spill it all out. I'll spill my bag later and you can see what I got. But it's all stuff that I know makes me feel good and I know how to prepare. And I've got loads of rices at home and things like that. Anyway, I wanted to get that out of the way because that's what's been on my mind the past few days, especially last night. I was up so late just thinking about it. Okay. So they were promising us a storm. <laughs> it hasn't really... I mean, we got hit pretty hard yesterday, but it's so calm today, I'm just confused. Where's this like epic storm they were promising? They're promising like 100 mile per hour winds here in the UK. And yeah, I mean, there's no wind today, so... Maybe it's coming. I don't know. Old wall. <laughs> that wall's actually in the ocean. <laughs> Surprised it's lasted so long. So this is the Menai Straits. This is what connects Anglesey and Bangor. Anglesey is the, is it called the peninsula? I'm not sure. I don't think it's called a peninsula. It's just the island above where I live. It's the very northern point of Wales. But it's nice, it's nice down here. It's very calm. Not many walkers around here, so. But the space to ourselves. Mr. Jass is over there. Mr. Jass woke me up at like 8 a.m. puking on my floor today. Very nice, very kind of him. I'm actually happy that I'm not barefoot. This was an unconscious decision, but I'm happy I'm not barefoot because this stuff, these things suck to walk on. They're basically just bent nails and they're horrible. They're there to stop you from slipping. <laughs> I would love to build something like this. <sighs> like, what's on my mind all day, every day is just land, creating permaculture, building houses. Are these are the kind of things I want to do. 
we don't have the money for yet. Just like, well, I want to do it. I'm ready. Well, I suppose I'm not ready because I haven't earned the money yet. So I guess I got to put in that work first. I'm ready to start building. Like I'm, every, all my efforts day to day are to get to that goal. Yeah, I appreciate you guys sending me videos all the time of like hobbit holes and permaculture houses and alternate living. Like I've seen so many videos now. People keep suggesting to me van life and I'm, I've done van life. I've done van life, I've done car life. It's not, it's not for me guys. There's so many things that I require to make the content that I make. You can't really do it with a laptop. And running running a whole PC from a solar in the UK just ain't gonna do it. It's not gonna not gonna work. Um, main reason I don't like well driving in general is because the police own the roads. They have all the authority. If they want to pull you over for absolutely no reason, they can do it. If they want to give you a ticket, if they want to give you points, they can take your license away. Like it just takes one bad cop, and everything's ruined for you. Living on the road. You're always thinking in the back of, your, back of your mind, can I park here? Am I gonna get moved on in the middle of my sleep? I've had so many sleepless nights because I was in places that I could have been moved on. Not for any good reason, but because that's what police do. They're bored in the middle of the night. It's night shift, they've got nothing going on. They see a van, they know someone's sleeping in it, they just go harass them. Happened a lot. And uh, I mean, break-ins, there's just all sorts of things. Like. These van lifers on YouTube make it look so glamorous and romantic, but that's usually because they're in a relationship. There's two people in the van. That's a bit more fun, because then you're not doing all the driving. But just the idea of just never stopping really, you just go from one spot to another, burning gas, and what do you, what do you get out of the end of it? A bit of experience in the real world, maybe. I feel like van life is just too cushy, it's too, comfortable it's not as it's not like this discomfort that everyone's seeking if you want discomfort backpack that's uncomfortable you're carrying everything you own on your back and you have to rely on the kindness of strangers to get around or have a lot of savings it's that's that's real travel to me obviously <laughs> people are going dis to disagree with me on that one but van life is just too you have all your comforts you have a kitchen you have a bucket to pee in like it's too easy for people. But yeah, it's not for me. I, boat life, van life, it's, it's very difficult. I need more space than that. And I don't like the idea of being moved on. Also, to be a successful van lifer, you really need to be a mechanic. Because vans break. That's what they're best at, breaking. So unless you have infinite money, you need to be a mechanic. And I am not that, I'm not willing to learn. I'm honestly not a fan of petrol diesel engines. So yeah, it's just not for me, guys. I appreciate everyone suggesting it, but I have tried it. I've done many videos of van life. Back before it was a big trend. I was doing it because it was the only thing I could afford. I'm, I'm seeking more than that. I wanna build a house from the ground up using reclaimed materials. I wanna perma do permaculture. I wanna rewild some forest. I want more than just tarmac and diesel. You know in American music videos back in like the early 2000s, they'd always have like gangs of kids just hanging out at the bridges, skating and drinking and like being rebellious. I never had that growing up. I never had a bunch of kids that would hang out under a bridge with me. Not that I didn't hang out under bridges, but I was on my own usually. <laughs> I think it's more of an American stereotype, like pop punk stereotype than it is a UK thing. We just had chavs growing up. Hey, drop a comment if you were ever tormented by chavs growing up. Jeez. So much PTSD from those kids. No two bridges are the same. You'd think if they found the technology to, to make a successful bridge that they would just replicate it. But every bridge I've seen is different. Which, what, what does it mean? <laughs> Why aren't they all the same? Oh, I see an entrance. Wow. I mean, what was I expecting? Just a door to open? <laughs> it looks like a tomb. 
Never been down here before, not not this far into this woodland. It's quite nice. I just want to climb the bridge though. Which really fun. <laughs> Hi. Where'd you come from? <laughs> there you go, friend. Chest. <laughs> Where the heck did that dog come from? I just turned around and there's a giant dog there. Oh, okay, it's not an abandoned house. It's basically just a path to the beach. <laughs> nice. That looks like fun. There's a, there's a few stunts that I want to perform for these vlogs, but you need dry dry conditions because it becomes too dangerous otherwise. I like risk, but I like calculated risk. My stunts need either people around so they can spot me in case I hurt myself, or just the right conditions to perform it on my own, which usually means dry weather. Because it rains so much here in North Wales, a lot of these stunts have been off limits for me. There's a uh, television and radio tower <clears throat> over in the mountains and it's like one of the tallest structures in Europe and uh, I want to climb it but you need good conditions for that one because obviously if it's wet it's gonna be slippery if it's windy it's gonna potentially throw you off so I need the right conditions I've never seen anyone on YouTube do it before so I'm trying to be the first I'm not gonna give too many details but it's huge, it's a huge tower. So tonight is the start of Fortnite's FNCS, Fortnite Champion Series. It's the most competitive tournament that they, that they host. I think they host it three times a year. And it'll be the first time on the new map that they've had one. Very exciting, I'm not gonna be taking part. I'll be definitely watching it. It's like, it's like watching a, a sports tournament. It's just eSports. And I've never had any interest in watching sports or like X Games or any of that stuff, it's really boring to me. But for some reason, watching competitive video games, wow, it's it's so fascinating. Uh, there's a lot of money on the line too, I think they've got like 3 million up for grabs. So it's gonna be very competitive, very fun to watch. Like essentially, you're just watching teenagers fight for millions of dollars. It's just so crazy. I'm expecting rain, so I didn't bring my nice camera with me. But I found this little island over here, which you can only reach when it's low tide. So we're gonna go across and see if it's photo worthy. As I'm like out here hunting, I'm also looking for spots that I can, you know, get stoned and meditate when I'm back, back to doing, doing weed. I, I still don't know if I'm actually gonna come back, but I asked myself to do a year. If I can do that, then I feel like I have permission to come back if I choose. If I can stay away for a year and it's not an issue, then uh, I think I'm allowed to do what I want after that. It's funny because I'm giving myself rules. No one's else, no one else tell me what to do or what not to do. Like, it's just, I like to know if, if I'm able to do things. So I set these challenges, for example, get s sober for a year. I set these challenges just to see if I can. And then if I can, I know it's not a, as big of a problem as I thought, and I can reduce my intake whenever I feel like it. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Again, hey, I found another camping spot. <laughs> a little island. It'll be surrounded by ocean most of the time, but for right now it's not. It's a cool spot. All right, let's do some swinging. It's a nice rope swing, but the rope itself is quite thin and doesn't feel nice on the hands. This is pretty cool. The tree fell over and died, the tree caught it. So it's technically still in the ground. Oh, it's still alive. It's growing new sprouts. Wow. Pretty cool. This is a nice little island. Hey, anybody want to come move here? You have the beautiful sound of the motorway. <laughs> the smell of the ocean. 
But you have an all, uh, you're an island. Hey, come on. <laughs> Somehow the boat chained up. Oh, here's something interesting I'll show you guys. So this house over here, it's completely detached from land. It's just, it's on an island. And um, the only way to get there is by boat. Which is so fascinating because they would have had to take a boat they would have had to put all the materials on boats to get it over there. That's like the most remote house that I know about in Wales. It's literally in the middle of the straits, so you can't access it. <laughs> Pretty cool. They have to get a boat in and out every day. They have one tree. So yeah, I don't know about that. I don't think I would want to be that recluse. I wouldn't want to be that excluded from everybody else. I like the idea of living up in the mountains because it's a mission to get up there, but it's not impossible. If people are determined, they can come visit you. <laughs> and then you get to be really selective of who visits your space. I had a dream last night where I had my own house. It was quite large, two floors, all my friends were over. And people I haven't spoken to or seen in like 10 years were there. And then like gangs of people just started showing up. People came in and started messing with my computer. Like, people just being really disruptive then police showed up and then there's like drugs everywhere and it's like I'm dreaming like worst case scenario what would happen if, if I had a space and made it really open and let strangers come in I think that's one thing I'll never do is let strangers into my home you have to earn my trust to find out where I live I've always kind of been that way if you want to come visit you I really need to know you because it's my my hole you know I, I can't have people disrupting my hole. <laughs> yeah, the dream is pretty wild. <laughs> I woke up in a sweat. Route, definitely campable. Could probably have quite a lot of people here. This is good. I'm making, I'm making a plan. Um, I'm mapping out areas to visit with you guys. So when we finally do some. Oh no! Oh no! No! I stood in that. Dang it. I guess I'm going in the ocean then, but it's annoying. I managed to stay dry this whole time. Didn't get any mud on me and then all this. <laughs> I'm distracted talking to you guys and I step in a giant gloop. Yeah, I'm mapping these areas out so that when we do like um, a hike together, um, the 2022 hike, uh, I'm sure we can do a lot of them, but we'll do it in springtime, I think. Uh, I'm mapping all these areas out so that we have multiple places to camp. I think it'd be really fun to have like a two, three day thing a long weekend together so if people want to make the effort to come up to North Wales I can show them some of the best spots some of the best camp outs I'm planning it all but I'm waiting until nicer weather before I kind of solidify anything this is a money dump sorry a money stump people hammer in some coins There's a rainforest in Scotland that I really want to visit. It's like the mossiest place I've ever seen. And I don't know when I'll ever get the chance to go up there. I think I need to like get a sponsored trip to go that far away. That's what I'm trying to do now is only travel for work. Not so much for pleasure because when you travel for work, bank account goes brr. When you travel for pleasure, bank account goes brr. There's so many people I know that travel for business and. Like, it's the best. Getting paid to, to go places. Thing is, I used to get paid to go places back when I had sponsors. I haven't had a sponsor in like five years or something crazy. That's the thing, if you're an influencer and you never do anything controversial, you don't need to worry about money. Brands will just throw money at you. But as soon as you become a human and break and do something wrong, then all, all that money goes taken away. You guys managed to survive the winter vlogs. I'm so excited for you because you get to see Wales in spring. It's quite nice. It's like the only thing really getting me through all of this is just knowing that it's gonna look so much better. It's 
it's gonna smell better, it's gonna feel better. There'll be some sunlight finally. <laughs> that's that's their biggest energy drainer is just not having that light source. So when I wake up, it's not very bright. When I go about my day, I don't get the rays on my face. It causes skin problems, it causes just general fatigue. So in spring, I'm gonna be so bouncy because I'm getting all of that back. Just this way. Getting all of that back. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm also excited just to eat all this food I bought. I bought some nice stuff. I can eat loads of fruits. Yeah, hey, rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he loves to chase animals, but he's never gonna. He doesn't do anything when he gets to them. He's just curious. I think he likes to run the same time something else runs. So if you're if you're like a, I don't know, horse or a sheep or something or a rabbit, he'll run after you. But when he gets to you, he just wants to play. He doesn't actually. He won't bite you. He won't do anything malicious. He's a very kind dog. Some of the stuff I got, got some mangoes, parsnip, butternut squash, got some mangoes, some kiwis, a little avocado, some beans, some, some chili stuff. Yeah, lots of and a giant melon. So, so I did some yoga and now I'm watching some competitive Fortnite. I watched the EU and now I'm watching the American one and I'm packaging crystal orders so I've got a few more to go and then I've got to connect my printer. I need to find out why it won't connect and how do I connect it. It's really frustrating. Printers are just annoying. They're so annoying to work with because um, I've got more, more orders to print. I'm still working on the ones that I printed a couple days ago but there's more orders that have come in. Once all of this is done I can then start tie-dyeing, start getting messy with paint. That's what I want. Um, yeah apparently there's a massive storm coming in tomorrow. It's going to be really gnarly for the UK, so I will likely go storm chasing, why not? It sounds really fun. We're expecting a lot of trees to come down, yeah, should be fun. I mean, it's all coming from the media, the media lies about everything, so who knows? We'll just go outside and see what happens, but I'm excited. I need to eat. I was going to make a really delicious meal and I haven't done it yet. So now my brain is like, well, what's the fastest meal I could do? But that was the problem. The problem was I wasn't consciously eating. I need to put in the effort and just I'm done packaging orders all those going out tomorrow I have more to do but I've got to get the printer working and that's like tomorrow's job I guess after the storm chase so yeah tune in tomorrow we're gonna chase some storm <laughs> we'll see what happens the storm starts at 3 a.m. so I'll probably be up when it starts and then um, I'll get a good idea of what to expect cool good night see you tomorrow thanks for hanging out again um, thanks for everyone that joined the discord. I see you all. I see you all joining the discord It's cool to have you there All right, bye-bye